What's your thoughts on government cover-ups or covert societies attempting to control humanity? Do you believe in ancient astronauts, intergalactic communication, or extraterrestrial visitations? Ever had an experience with disembodied spirits or the paranormal universe? Are these subjects fact or fiction? Each week, Tony and Eddie explore these unbelievable realities and beyond. Exclusively on Truth Be Told. Welcome back to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, and thank you for sticking with us after the break. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, and filling in for Eddie today with the amazing Walt Lusk. Earlier, we brought up the idea of whistleblowing, which is deemed illegal and dishonest when a person exposes any kind of information within an organization that is either private or public. And today's guest knows plenty about that since he is one of the nation's leading advocates for corporate and government whistleblowers. He has a record of winning whistleblower cases dating back to 1984 and many of his court victories have become landmark precedents in the modern workplace. And he has established the employees' rights of free speech under the First Amendment, and his clients have even blown the whistle on billion-dollar tax frauds and unsafe disposable of toxic wastes. He is also the author of The Whistleblower's Handbook, a step-by-step guide to doing what's right and protecting yourself, as well as seven other books on civil rights and whistleblower laws. He is also a very respected scholar and litigator with degrees from Boston University, Brown University, and Northeastern University. And we are pleased to have him on the show today. Welcome, Stephen Martin Cohn. There he well, is. Thank you. thank you. How you doing? That's a great introduction. Well, hey, for a man like you, we have to give you at least something there, you know? <laughs> well, your, I'm, your, I, your reputation definitely precedes you. Well, I'm here. I'm Tony Sweet. And I'm Walt Lusk. And we're so excited, and, and we, we sorry that uh, there was a miscommunication, but we're glad you're here because uh, I know our audience really wants to know uh, about uh, whistleblowers because whistleblowing is nothing new to just the 21st century. Uh, this has been going on for a long time, and there's many you know pretty famous whistleblowers that have changed America. And I, I want to know how you got started working with people uh, that – Blew the whistle on many corporations and political uh, can- candidates. Well, it was back in 1982. I was in law school, and I spoke to an inspect a nuclear power plant who found safety problems. Oops. And my job was to try to find something, some way to help this guy. And I realized that there were lots of whistleblowers out there that needed help. There were very few laws. So it was a challenge, and I took it on right out of law school. And so right out of law school, that, and that's that, that's pretty, I have to say this, ballsy, because uh, you know a lot of people in the political world, especially even in corporate, that when you're trying to help the whistleblower, they're, they're not going to be your friend. Yeah, they're, they obviously <laughs> don't think too kindly of that. And how, 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 yes. how did you stay successful when you had so many very uh, powerful people that probably did not like what you were doing? Well, it's really the clients and the whistleblowers. They make it all worthwhile. I mean, these people risk it all, and they're insiders. Yeah. They often have incredible information, and knowledge is power. And these folks come forward with, with big scandals, mm-hmm. and, and they really set the stage. I mean, what you need is a lawyer who can help them get up to bat. But when they get up bat, up to bat swinging, I mean, they can really make some change. Absolutely. So, it, you know, many lawyers don't like their clients or they don't like their cases. But that's not me and, or anyone I work with. We love our clients and they, they're just American heroes. And that's and I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of people that let's just bring Edward Snowden that I think now people are starting to say he's a hero, but when it first happened, a lot of people were saying that he was a traitor yeah. and he should be punished. And but I think now we're we're many of us will starting to say you know he's a hero. And what is that big misconception when when somebody says a whistleblower? It's kind of like tattletelling on somebody when you know as a kid. But what what is that big misconception and, and scares people from becoming whistleblowers? Well, 
the amazing thing about whistleblowing today in a modern industrial society is fraud is designed to be hidden. Corruption is all designed to be hidden. Mm -hmm. So unless you have an insider, you can't detect fraud. So in America today, the number one source for all fraud detection mm -hmm. are whistleblowers. And they're mm -hmm. detecting billions in fraud, recovering billions for the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So they're the insiders, and that's happening every day. Uh, Snowden had a problem, which is there was no whistleblower law to protect him. He had no safe channel. He had no protection. And so you have someone on the inside. They believe they have a big scandal. They want to go public. And there's no way to do it that's legal. Hmm. So he did what he did, and it's kind of a tragedy all around. Uh, the U.S. public benefits from his information, and they fix some of the laws, but he's in a jam, and the government also doesn't quite know what information he's released or not. So without real whistleblower laws, it's a lose-lose for both the whistleblower and society. But the bottom line is, insiders are the key to detection of fraud and corruption. And it makes sense. It does make sense, and I think I think a lot of people might want to know uh, the w w like for Snowden. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, c talk about the the um, uh, attorney uh, uh, justice department uh, could strike a deal with Eric or Edward Snowden. So w why why the change with with the government of maybe striking a deal? Yeah, instead they were of just they were hell bent on yeah, uh, putting this guy away forever. Yeah. So what what's what changed? Well, I think if you see, they just changed the Patriot Act. Oh, His yeah, yeah. allegation of widespread constitutional violation and misconduct in testimony for Capitol Hill all was proven true. His concerns were valid. And then, therefore, he deserves credit for that. And under our First Amendment, the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution that guarantees freedom of speech, you're supposed to balance the public right to know with the government's legitimate need for secrecy. And I think as the facts are coming out, the public's right to know is beating the need for secrecy. So I, I hope they make a deal with him. I hope they get rational. They also have to recognize that because there was no law, they essentially created the problem. So they should try to fix it. Well, my understanding is, and putting it in a different perspective, is the fact with Edward Snowden, there wasn't any U.S. Uh, publication that actually released all the information and the fact of what he had. It was done with the, through The Guardian, which, of course, is through England. So we have a media in this country, I think, that's culpable in many instances in hiding um, what's going on in terms of what's going on in government specifically um, and, and not helping in terms of whistleblowing at all. Do you agree? Yeah, it's unfortunate. A lot of the news media is compromised. Uh, but interesting, the first big whistleblower cases all established the constitutional right for whistleblowers to give information to the news media. They found a public right to know about government misconduct. They found, these are the courts, that the main reason the First Amendment was passed by our founding fathers was to inform the public about government misconduct. And you do that through the press. So whistleblowers going to the press is age, age old. It's fully protected under the Constitution. As I say, there's a balancing test. And let's just hope the press does their job. Yeah, the Guardian did their job. Often the press does or doesn't, and it's kind of tragic if they don't. But there's no way for the American people to know what their government is up to, no. especially if there's corruption, unless the press exposes it. Well, because my understanding of the last 10 scandals that's in this country, nine of them were released by press that was out of the United States. Hmm. So it's diff I mean, you, uh, you can have a whistleblower well, here in the U.S., there's no guarantee that it'll hit, it'll, it'll hit, hit the news. So I think that's frustrating. There's... Yeah, there's no guarantee 
that if you blow the whistle, you will survive the ordeal. You can Correct. be fired, blacklisted. Uh, yeah. It's a tough road yeah. to be a whistleblower. And, okay, you wrote the book, The Whistleblower Handbook, Blower's Hand, a step-by-step uh, step guide to doing what's right and protecting yourself. What what made you want to, to write a book? Well, today there are some very powerful whistleblower laws. Whistleblowers can obtain multi-million dollar awards yep. based on the information they provide. So it's not, no longer just all doom and gloom. So it's absolutely critical for anyone blowing the whistle to know their rights, to know how to do it for maximum protection, but also to learn if they have information about frauds in government contracting, tax fraud, banking fraud, that, that, they, that there may be large financial incentives to do the right thing. And I'm I'm looking at some of the the, the uh, questions that uh, I've, I've wrote down, and uh, one that really stood out to me is uh, the impact of Edward Snowden uh, of currently. But if you could list the top three whistleblowers in the last fifty years, who do you, who do you think would would they be that made well, the biggest if impact? You're just looking at at mega impact. You have deep throat leading to the resignation yes, of a president. Right. You have Linda Tripp leading to the disgrace of a president. Clinton. And then you have the uh, Wall Street whistleblowers. But I would put Bradley Birkenfell, the Swiss bank whistleblower. Uh, uh, yeah. His name isn't as well known, but he's recovered name. probably $20 billion hmm. for the taxpayers and counting and has ended with banking for U.S. citizens, massive public benefit. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot, that's <laughs> that's, a lot of money. That's, that's a, wow, wow. Well, and yeah, did, it, and Swiss, bank, guy, Swiss, yeah, Swiss banks, Swiss banks aren't what they used to be. One guy blew the whistle, and believe it or not, every Swiss bank has shut their doors to illegal U.S. accounts. It's an unbelievable earthquake in terms of honesty in terms of bringing dollars back to the U.S. economy, in terms of the billions and billions paid in fines, mm -hmm. one whistleblower did that. Wow. And, and people can look it up online, Birkenfeld. It's just incredible what he did. For the people out there that are working in the corporate or even political world, and they have information that could make a difference uh, to the taxpayers and just uh, as Americans or even just worldwide and they're scared to to come forth what can they do to protect themselves in advance or as soon as they open their mouth well the biggest advance in the laws right now is the right to become a whistleblower and maintain your confidentiality and anonymity these are brand new laws impacting all wall street fraud foreign corruption tax fraud, and to a limited extent, fraud in government contracting. And it lets the whistleblower come forward confidentially to the government. It puts a restriction on the government's ability to ever release your identity. So if you can do it without your boss knowing, and you can get real evidence of fraud to the appropriate authority, the ability to effectuate change, to stop corruption, and actually to obtain financial rewards is immense. It works. And uh, it is a little, it, it doesn't hit the press like it should, but every day there are major disclosures of fraud from whistleblowers, major banking fraud, and uh, the, the, these laws are working better than anyone ever imagined. When did these laws go into effect? Well, essentially, the first was in 86, but okay. it's still pretty unknown. Okay. The second, 2006. The main one, 2010, in the Dodd-Frank Act. Hmm. All Dodd Frank. fraud, all commodities fraud, bribery. And you can blow the whistle anonymously under these laws. Now, for the people that 
are in jail, prison, you know, like Snowden overseas that were not, are, are they protected under this new law or are they kind of grandfathered out? <laughs> well, it depends on what you blow the whistle on. Now, I have clients from Switzerland, from China, from Russia. They're blowing the whistle on their countries is completely illegal. But they can come to America and blow the whistle anonymously, and it's working. But for someone like Snowden, as I said earlier, national security whistleblowing was excluded from the major whistleblower law. Jim, why am I not so surprised? People like Snowden and Drake and others, they had no way to blow the whistle and to be safe. And, and Congress has still not fixed this problem. No, hmm. they haven't. If, if uh, people go to your, the website, uh, whistleblowers, uh, dot org what what can we find uh for potential uh whistleblowers or what can they what can they look for and what can they expect on the website no well, i highly recommend it and the website is whistleblowers with an s dot org and there's a section called protect yourself so it gives basic information on how to protect yourself it has an attorney referral service so you can try to connect with a lawyer, and it has information about the handbook. I can't, that handbook was written because so many whistleblowers blew the whistle the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, there were imagine. laws that could protect them, but they didn't go to the right office. They didn't make the right type of report. So my, my single biggest advice to every person who may blow the whistle is learn your right before you blow the whistle, learn mm -hmm. how to do it, figure out what laws would protect you. And the way, the best way to do that is go to the website whistleblowers.org, go to protect yourself, and start educating yourself on how to do it right. And what is, what is, before we get out of here and let you go, I know you're out having fun with your family, but what, what, what are the, uh, some of the, the stuff you're working on now that you can talk about? Yeah. Now, what's the future hold? Yeah, the, my major cases right now is fraud and contracting. There's tons of people get a government contract and they think it's a license to steal. Hmm. But guess what? It isn't. And there's very powerful anti-fraud laws. We have a lot of government contracting cases, but we're also looking at foreign banks. The foreign banks can be hit here in America because they do their transactions, their monetary exchanges in America. And, and the amount of corruption and fraud in European and Hong Kong banks is mind-boggling. So we're trying yeah. to hold them accountable under U.S. law. This is, uh, it's very so, fascinating. So along those lines, though, what, what do you think the future holds for, for people that are going to be whistleblowing? you think it's going to be easier or it's still going to be tough? Or, um, you know, uh, well, it's a war right now. Yeah. It's a war. Yeah. The yeah. U.S. Chamber of Commerce is trying to undermine the whistleblower laws. Courts wow. can be very hostile. Congress is kind of 50-50. They do the right thing, then they back off. Mm -hmm. Right now, the jury is out. There are some great laws. They're all under attack. But right now, if you use the good laws, you can win your case. Wow. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for being here. We we're going to have to have you back in uh, one of these one of these days because this is fascinating stuff, and I know the people out there that. Uh, are interested in this behind the scenes oh, political and even corporate definitely. whistleblowing this is this is this is the man to go to Stephen Martin Cohn and uh, we want to uh, say we appreciate you for joining us today and we want to make sure everybody go to whistleblowers.org and make sure you uh, pick up his book uh, right here on I think on Amazon and probably pretty much any place else but the whistleblowers handbook a step by step guide to doing what's right and protecting yourself. So we want to thank you so much, Stephen. Appreciate it. Stephen Martin Cohn. Well, thanks. Well, great, great question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Wonderful. Great show. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Well, we're going to.